unscripted today anyway. Raise your hands if you're weary. The rest are too tired to raise your hands. <laughs> Once there was a little bunny who wanted to run away. So he said to his mother, I'm running away. If you run away, said his mother, I will run after you, for you are my little bunny. If you run after me, said the little bunny, I'll become a fish in a trout stream and I will swim away from you. If you become a fish in a trout stream, said his mother, I'll become a fisherman, and I will fish for you. If you become a fisherman, said the little bunny, I'll become a rock on the mountain high above you. If you become a rock on the mountain high above me, said his mother, I'll become a mountain climber, and I will climb to where you are. If you become a mountain climber, said the bunny, I will be a crocus in a hidden garden. If you become a crocus in a hidden garden, said his mother, I will be a gardener, and I will find you. If you are a gardener and find me, said the bunny, I'll be a bird and fly away from you. If you become a bird and fly away from me, said his mother, I will be the tree that you come home to. If you become a tree, said the bunny, I'll be a little sailboat and sail away from you. If you become a sailboat and sail away from me, said his mother, I will become the wind and blow you where I want you to go. If you become the wind, I will join a circus and fly away on flying trapeze. If you go flying on a flying trapeze, said his mother, I will be a tightrope walker and I will walk across the air to get to you. If you become a tightrope walker and you walk across the air, I'll become a little boy and I will run into a house. If you become a little boy and run into a house, said his mother, I will become your mother and catch you in my arms and hug you. Shucks, said the bunny. I might just as well stay here and be your little bunny. <laughs> and so he did. Have a carrot, said the mother bunny. The mother bunny can represent many different roles in our lives. For some, the mother bunny might represent the universal force or God that no matter where you run off to, that spiritual force will always find you. But today, the mother bunny represents something different than that. It represents the rest that we refuse to give ourselves. Because we're always running away from what's good for us. 89% in last year's statistics indicated how much they their jobs. Hate their jobs. Absolutely hate their jobs. Hate their work. Miserable. Hate when Sunday night comes because they have to get up tomorrow and drive to what they hate. 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 Absolutely hate. So tomorrow's Labor Day, right? Here's the official definition. The first Monday in September, it's a creation of the labor movement and is dedicated to the social and economic achievements of American workers. It constitutes a yearly national tribute to the contributions workers have made to the strength, prosperity, and well-being of our country. And if you're lucky, you're off tomorrow. If you're really lucky, you're being paid to do so. So you're not supposed to labor on Labor Day. You're supposed to lay back and rest and relax from the weariness of what it means to do the work you do. But my suggestion today is to look at the spiritual self. To look at who we are as individuals.
because when I meet people, they're not tired of their work only. They're tired of themselves, mainly. They don't like who they are. That's why they're like little bunnies, always running away from themselves. The further they can get away, the better off they'll be. The problem is that you always end up coming back home. We have a hard time just being little bunnies, enjoying the carrots, enjoying the safety of mom, enjoying what it means to be a human being instead of a human doing. We're always doing crap, aren't we? Crap is a technical term. I hope you enjoy it. We're always doing something. For many of us, we're challenged. We have a hard time not doing something. Have you noticed that? We get antsy if we don't have something to do. Just simply existing and being is uncomfortable for many of us because, quite frankly, we're not very happy in our own company. If we're doing something, we can at least outrun our own ruminations and thoughts about who we are and who we aren't. We can avoid and outrun the regrets and our failure to actualize our potential in life. So I picked a passage from that wonderful but also dangerous book, The Holy Bible. Matthew 11 Jesus says, Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Now, this is not the yoke that you have to worry about cholesterol. He's not talking about that yellow yoke. He's talking about the guidance the yoke of an oxen, how it guides a team. Take my counsel, and you will find rest for your souls. So, let's just take it apart. Come to me, all who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Who do you go to when you're weary? When I come out, you know you're in trouble. <laughs> who do you go to when you're weary? Anyone. You go to her. What good does that do? Does she listen? Is that all you need? Perfect. So you go to your trusted mate, your partner. Who else? Who do you, who do you go to when you're weary? Yeah. Who? Members of your family. Members of your family. Trustworthy ones, anyway. So family. Significant other. I go to nature. You go to nature. Who else? Music. You go to music. Apparently you do too. <laughs> On a regular basis. Unscripted. <laughs> so we have nature, we have music, we have family, and we have what else? Sleep. Sleep. Who says sleep? Sleep can be wonderful if you can actually attain it. It's wonderful. Very restorative. How many of you could sleep for a thousand years? How many of you feel like you have been? <laughs> Other things that help you. Who do you go to? What do you go to? I expect a lot from Unitarian crowds. If you were a Baptist crowd, I'd let you off the hook right now. But you're Unitarians. You're free, creative, out-of-the-box thinkers. So you're not off the hook. I want more. Friends. Friends. You have friends? Yes. That alone is amazing. <laughs> Real friends. I only have like two that I could call that are true friends. I have a lot of acquaintances and associates, but I don't really rely on them because they don't show up. They're fair weather, convenience friends. But real friends, ah, that's wonderful. You're doing well, keep going. Friends, music, and walks. Friends, music, and walks. All right, what else? Yoga. Yoga. How many of you do yoga? One, two. All right, what else you got? Bicycling. Bicycling. Vacation. Vacations? Where do you go on vacation? Beach. The beach. Nice, cheap, free entertainment. If you could just get everybody else off the beach, you'd be all right. 
Keep going. You're doing great. Restful literature. Huh? Literature. Uh -huh. Restful. Restful literature. Not excitable like me, but restful and peaceful. <laughs> I have high energy and I'm always like this. People are always accusing me of being on drugs. And I always say, yes, I'm on drugs. It's me. It's called the drug of Mark. I wake up like this. And I go, 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 go. In very similar ways, I am that little bunny always running here and there. But I'm not trying to outrun myself. So you've all named some things that help you. Where do you go when you're weary? Who gives you rest? What relieves your burdens? Is there anything else? I, I find it fascinating. I find all of you fascinating. But I find it fascinating that you didn't say some of the things I expected to hear. So I'm coming back out again. <laughs> Other things that can give you rest. Church service. Church service. Meditation. Meditation. You said meditation or medication? Ah! <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, okay. See, now that's a, that's a very good one because medication can give you rest. Raise your hands if you require or you prefer a sleeping pill to induce your sleep at night. Yep, one, the rest of you are absolute liars. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Not everyone uses them. I do every night, 9 o'clock. Boom, like clockwork. I can't turn my brain off. So 15 milligrams of Restoril does it for me. And I will not do without it. Call me an addict all day long. It's a healthy addiction. You're damn right I use it. Nothing wrong with using it if you need it. Medication. How about antidepressants? Have an anxiety medication. Does that help you get rest and relief when you're weary? It depends on the nature of the problem, but it could. It certainly could. While we're on the subject, true or false? Attention deficit disorder, seasonal affective disorder, and social anxiety disorder are legitimate disorders. False! No doctor ever discovered any of these. They are not disorders. They are not diseases. You know who discovered these? Pharmaceutical companies. Pharmaceutical companies, marketing companies. They created it so they could sell you the cure. Now what is this really an example of? In many cases, not all, it's an example of people not having the ability to be self-disciplined, to delay gratification, and to make the most of their lives. We become a culture that wants it now and fast. And if a pill can handle that, let's handle that. That was a little test, and most of you did all right with that. What else makes you peaceful? Carrie doesn't like it when I do this. My wife won't <laughs> say it, but her, her good friend Jack Daniels. <laughs> Your wife won't say it, but you just did. Jack Daniels, Jim Beam. Johnny Walker. Alcohol, another drug. It's a way to calm me down. I have two scotches every night. I'm not ashamed of that. I'd have three if I could get away with it, and I might tonight. <laughs> it is instant relaxation, and it's a way to turn it off. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. The yoke of guidance, gentle and humble in heart. And you will find rest for your souls. Who, who guides you? As individuals, who guides you? Whose yoke of guidance do you take upon yourselves? Friends. Friends. For guidance. Intuition. Intuition. Beautiful answer. You trust your own gut. I always say, trust your gut, unless you've eaten Mexican. <laughs> it's almost always right. It's almost always right. What's your gut tell you to do? Ah, trust that. What else guides you? My heart. Your heart. Experience. Experience. Having done and been there teaches you, and you can learn from mistakes and your seasoned life. <coughs> Absolutely. None of you have said lawyers. <laughs> None of you have said doctors. None of you have said politicians or or people in power, why not? Are you that cynical, old, great, Unitarian ones? Yes. That's what I want to hear. 
Let me show you something else that's a clear example and symbolic gesture that you proved this morning suggests here is how you guide each other. Right here. See that? You all put rocks in there. Notice when the rocks go in, the water rises up. Sustenance. Life. You can take a drink together. You communally share and guide each other by participating in a rock ritual that is so much more than rocks and water. So much more. Who else do you go to for guidance? Psychologists. Psychologists. Good luck finding one you can trust. <laughs> for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. It's the last part of the verse. Yeah. Spiritual and cultural leaders. Spiritual and cultural leaders. Like Dr. King. Like Dr. King. Kurt Vonnegut. Kurt Vonnegut. Who else? He, don't you love it when I come here and make you work? You're paying me to make you work. I refuse to just lecture and preach and teach. I did that for years. I could certainly do it again, but not with you. You're my favorite group, so I'm going to give you all the fun. <laughs> You're going to participate in your own learning experience if it kills you. And it might. If it does, I'll bury it. No problem. <laughs> yeah. The nature and structure of the universe at the largest scale. The nature and structure of the universe. I looked up into the sky and I said to the stars, Sir, I exist. The stars looked back at me and said, that fact creates in me no sense of obligation. <laughs> that is classic Unitarianism. It Believing in everything but getting almost nothing. It teaches, but being all right with that. It teaches me that my problems don't matter. Your problems don't matter. <coughs> huh. Agree with him? Raise your hands. <coughs> One, two. The rest of you aren't sure what you want to say about that, so you're not going to raise your hands. That's very Unitarian also, non-committal. <laughs> I refuse to raise my hand for or against anything because I'm for everything. It's a great paralyzing position to be in. Unless you're a different kind of Unitarian. And that's the beauty of Unitarianism. Each one is a little bit different. There are custom clips of Unitarian experiences. I'm privileged to go all across Central Florida and sample them all. Which is why I'm on medication. <laughs> <laughs> for my yoke is easy my burden is light let's drive this home the, the fact of the matter is when we share our pain when we share our losses when we share our burdens they become lighter somehow and we're not having to deal with things all by ourselves most of us resist uh, we resist living we have two lives many of us we have, we have the, uh, the life we live and we have the unlived life within us. And you know what stands in the middle of that unlived life and life we live? One big word, resistance. Resistance. We allow resistance to get in the way of the life we'd like to live. It has been said that hell is occupied with the person that you could have been in life. And you'll have to spend eternity with that person that you could have been. Had you just not allowed resistance its place. <coughs> It's a very difficult enemy resistance. We find ways to resist being who we are. And so we often live unfulfilled lives, and it makes us weary. I'd like to meet some people who are truly actualized, who are living exactly the way they need to be and live, who are unfolding their experience of self in their perfect, unique way. But many of them are not doing that. They feel constrained to responsibilities and to jobs and situations and relationships that are wrong for them. And they don't know what to do to be who they really are. They are dying to be themselves, but they are not. And weary is exactly what they are. And the prescription for spiritual rest is friendship, community, conversation, sharing the burden, letting the yoke of someone you trust guide and comfort and care for you instead of resisting. Instead of resisting. Res resisting. Raise your hands if you've ever bought a treadmill and never, never used it. Where is it sitting? In the attic or the garage or something? 
How about uh, ever quit yoga or meditation or a course that you started? Ever quit that halfway? Yeah. Ever bail out of a humanitarian calling or a commitment to other people? Ever want to be a mom, a doctor, a public defender, or an official, but just not quite do it? Late at night, do you ever sort of think to yourself, uh, I could be this if I would just get past this. I could be this kind of person. Are you a writer who doesn't write? Are you a painter who doesn't paint? Are you an artist who doesn't art? Are you living a fulfilled, happy life? If you're any of these things, insert your own title, then you understand resistance. And resistance is not only futile, according to the board, but it is painful, according to us. If we resist who we really are, there will be no rest for our weary bodies and souls ever. So my encouragement today and tomorrow on Labor Day is, don't take the day off. Oh sure, if you want, take the day off from your work, but don't take the day off from being who you are. That requires diligent labor to unfold the life you're intended to have. If you're living a life that's not yours, give it back to the person who wants it and live your own life. Don't miss out on that or there will be no rest for your weary soul. As usual, I'm grateful that you let me come and speak to you. I'm always happy to be here. I'm always happier to leave. <laughs> you get it. You get my sense of humor. I say, you can't do that every place. Someone who understands you is more important, or at least as, as important, as a good antidepressant. Close your eyes. Just be quiet for a minute before I let you go. I, I want to do something that I know grinds against you. That's why I want to do it. Prayer. You go wherever you have to go, and I'll say the words. God, I'm thankful for this group. I'm thankful that they love each other enough to come here and share their pain and their joys in communal waters. We're thankful for this safe place to be. May each of us examine our own heart and figure out how we are running away like little bunnies. Help us to be all right with being little bunnies. Help us to be humans being and not humans doing, and thereby bring rest for our weary souls. Amen.